Hi there, me, your friendly neighborhood humble stroke assaulter. So I'm going to do a response video, so to speak. Someone, I believe, still is one of my subscribers, left a comment about, do statin drugs cause depression? Well, I'm kind of curious about that because I'm on a statin drug and I'm trying to avoid the post-stroke depression. So I did some research. Um, taking some time to do this video, a couple of reasons. One, I'm not a doctor. I've only ever played one on TV. Uh, two, I don't want to be perceived were attributed to be given advice that causes someone to drastically change their state of care. So if anything I say during the course of this video happens to resonate with you and you feel the need to make a medication change, that is going to be needing a discussion between you and your clinical team. An open, honest, fully informed discussion between you, your neurologist, you, your general practitioner, you, your cardiologist, whoever. So I'm not advocating in any way that you stop your medications without proper medical deliberation. On that note, let's discuss this. So I've taken a lot of time to do some research and I had a hypothesis through all my research, what I'll get into later, and that's what's taken me some while to do this video, is I don't think it's the statins causing the depression. I think it's the reasons why you're on the statins. Problem. I had to find the research to prove my hypothesis, and we'll get into that later. So, in the right patients, statin-based drugs can decrease the risk of heart attacks, strokes, and premature death. But like all drugs, they can have an unintended side effect. So, relatively recently, there's been some discussion around statin drugs tr triggering mood and behavioral changes. Uh, these are known as an adverse drug reaction or an ADR. Um, problem is most of these psychiatrically based ADRs um, around statin drugs are self-report uh, or caregiver care report. These problems are including in violent ideation, irritability, depression, and suicide. Along with these problems appear to be discontinued when the drug is discontinued. Well, that seems a bit cause and effect, doesn't it? But let's just consider that one of the studies that was done only had 12 participants, right? So individuals who take statin drugs to lower cholesterol sometimes display symptoms of irritability, anxiety, and depression. These symptoms are reported by family members, caregivers, and coworkers. Well, let's just consider the reason why you're on a statin-based drug. You've had a heart attack. You've had a stroke. Um, you've had some other life-changing, life-altering event that now requires medication possibly for the rest of your life. Is it the drug? I don't think so. So, now people that have these symptoms tend to be not aware. They lack self-awareness as to what's going on in their world, which is completely possible, right? So let's just be honest about that. Not everyone is going to be willing to admit when things are going on, right? Because some things are going on that you either don't want to admit to yourself or they're just a bit too complex to deal with. So, one second... So, one researcher by the name of Lake basically said that um, findings from human clinical trials, however, could raise questions about this hypothesis. Uh, he cited a lit review among statins and mental health, which the authors found no statistical or significant effect on low serum cholesterol concentrations and psychological well-being. Uh, they did hypothesize it could be the, the type of statin that you're on may have that impact. However, Lake also su suggested we need to check the cholesterol levels of severely depressed patients, especially those who are non-responsive or only partial responsive to antidepressants, address mental health issues possibly related to the use of certain cholesterol-lowering drugs. Well, if you're relatively young and you've had a heart attack or a stroke and now you're on a statin-based medication, your life has been turned upside down. They're not like Fresh Prince of Bel-Air turned upside down, where you're going to live on the West Coast. Um, you know, this is now life-altering. This is now life-outcome-altering. This now has 
the potential to bite you in the ass five years later, two years later, ten years later, right? And then, so there are some possibilities there. And I kept doing research and research, and finally today I stumbled across the article that basically proves my point. My hypothesis while doing the research has always been, I don't think it's the statin-based drugs causing the depression. I don't think it's, hello there, and how are you? What do you want? Look, we've been joined by my faithful sidekick and relatively mute co-host. That's Crash the Wonderbird. Hey, Crash. So, Dr. Golam, sorry if I mispronounced that name, did a, a study with 12 participants. Um, <clears throat> and during Dr. Golam's study, they noticed behavioral and psychiatric changes in cases that presented a range from violent nightmares to aggression, mood, personality changes, violent and homicidal ideation, in some instances culminating in suicide. In each apparent association with statin use, the temporal association between the drug initiation and the mood and behavior change, um, again, with the drug discontinuation, those symptoms resolve themselves on their own. However, it's 12 cases. So that's a rather limited amount of data. You've only got 12 people that report these things. Well, that's 12 people out of how many? You know, and, and how did you find those 12 people? Well, we're going to go back to Scandinavia because for some reason in that part of the world, they do some really good research. And in Sweden, they did essentially an entire national study. So a study published in December 2014 investigated whether the use of statin medications was associated with a change in the risk of developing depression in a very large Swedish national cohort. Uh, 4,600,000 people. They followed these people from January 1, 2006 to December 31st, 2008. So two years, almost 5 million people. And they determined that the use of any statin medication was associated with a reduction in risk of depression in individuals over age 40. Clarification of the strength of these proactive effects and the clinical relevance of these effects and determination of which statins are most effective is needed, right? So even they admit there is some research still needed. However, they do realize that given the anti-inflammatory and antioxidant properties of statins, recent authors have hypothesized that treatment with statins may have a proactive effect, or sorry, pro protective effect on the development of depression. This hypothesis is in contrast to, pre contrast to previous concerns but lower cholesterol levels that would have negatively impact on mood and behavior, right? And there's been a number of studies that have showed statins have had a negative impact on mood, behavior, but I'm gonna say it's not statins, right? And I believe this Swedish study backs me up that the statin medication, you started it more likely during a shitty part of your life. You've had a stroke, you've had a heart attack, um, you've gone to your family doctor for your yearly uh, physical and they determined that, you know what? Life isn't as good as you thought it was and now you're finding out you're a type 2 diabetic and now you're finding out that you have to change your diet more and now you're finding out you have to work out more and now you're finding out that, you know, you've got to do other things and in addition to your life changing because the doctor says so, now you're on statins. I wasn't on statins until my stroke. Um, I don't believe I have the high cholesterol level that I think I do. In fact, I'm going to try to make an argument with my general practitioner um, that maybe we can discontinue those medications around the year mark. Maybe, if you'll let me do that. Um, I don't know. And while well, doing my research on do statins cause depression, my entire theory was I don't think so. I, I don't think this, because if, if they had a definitive causal link that mood, behavior, affect, psychiatric changes, you had an adverse drug reaction to a statin that, that could cause depression, well, we get rid of statin medications quicker than we got rid of asbestos. And that took 30 years. Um, so I'm going to assert this. You may be on a statin medication 
and you may have been put on a statin-based medication relatively soon after your hospitalization. That be it for a heart attack, be it for a stroke, uh, be it for any other condition where your general practitioner, neurologist, cardiologist, or some other expert determines you may need to be on a statin-based <clears throat> medication. But the medication, it's not causal. It's, um, uh, great time not to think of a word. Um, it's anecdotal. It's, it's totally anecdotal. I'm going to say the reason why you may be on a statin-based medication and also experiencing symptoms of depression or symptoms of anxiety is because you've had a life altering event. You've had an event that has changed your world. You've had an event that has changed how you are required to relate to your world. You've had an event that has changed how you your behaviors are now going to be in the world. So my example, I had to quit smoking. There was there's no argument about it. I was a smoker. <clears throat> my last cigarette was about an hour and a half before my stroke. Um, I have not purchased borrowed, begged, stolen um, a cigarette in any way from anyone since my stroke. Um, have I had cravings? Definitely. Do I miss it? No, not really. I'll be honest. I don't miss it. Um, a friend of mine at work, he had a heart attack. Uh, he was basically a, a Pepsi junkie. Um, he, because of his situation, found out that, you know, he's now diabetic uh, or, you know, the constant ingestion of Pepsi is probably not a good decision, so he cut out Pepsi. But that could be, you know, now let's also consider the other factors. You know, you've had a stroke. Well, two-thirds of stroke folk will more likely have some form of post-stroke depression or post-stroke anxiety. Um, two-thirds of all stroke folk are going to have some kind of major behavioral change, either short-term and or long-term after their stroke. So I'm not going to say it's the statins. I'm going to say definitively the reason why you are depressed after your stroke has nothing to do with the statins. At least that's my opinion. And, and you may be able to find better research than I did. And I've spent a couple of weeks doing research off and on. Um, and then today I found an article that I felt confident is the answer because it's a two-year study involving almost 5 million people um, and I doubt you're going to find a study that's more recent and is thorough. And again, I'll include all the links, including the Swedish study in the description below. Now, are there side effects to statins? Definitely. Um, some people have liver issues. So if you're on statin medication, your GP should be doing a liver check. Um, some people have uh, gas. I unfortunately have a gas, um, heartburn kind of side effect from statins. Some people have sleep disruption uh, because of their statin medication. So there's many possible adverse drug reactions that are expected, um, that are intended, you know, adverse side effects of the statin. But that being said, before you make any change to any medication that's been dispensed to you due to your stroke, I need you to make sure that you check with your medical practitioners clinical team, your general practitioner, your neurologist, your cardiologist, any other doctor, legitimate doctor, that does not include anyone that has a naturopathic doctor or chiropractor, they're not doctors. Um, you know, uh, so you're going to go to a legitimate, licensed and trained medical practitioner. You're going to have an open and honest conversation. You're going to let the experts help make and guide your decision-making process in that regard because I, I'm not going to be held responsible because you think that I'm an expert because I'm not. I'm just a guy that has a YouTube channel that's had a stroke that can use the Googles. Um, and over the past couple weeks, my Google food was pretty weak and today my Google food got stronger. So on that note, if you happen to like what you've been watching the last, uh, been 10 months, in fact, 10 months, two days ago since my stroke, please like, share, subscribe. Are you on the scotch? We've already talked about this. Again, if you uh, like we've been watching in the past 10 months, please like, share, subscribe. If you know someone going through their own post-stroke journey, please point the channel up to them. If you know someone supporting someone going through a post-stroke journey, please, again, point the channel up to them. They may get something out of it. 
Uh, if you want to contact me, you can either leave a comment in the links or the comment section down below, or you can email me directly at strokeassaulter at gmail.com. I say again, you can email me directly at strokeassaulter at gmail.com. And if you happen to know or see around you, in yourself or someone around you, the signs or symptoms of a stroke, that being someone appears to be befuddled, confused, has a lack of balance, someone who's having vision problems, they see in grayscale, they can only see out of one eye, they only see out of a little circle, uh, they can't move their eyes in a certain direction, someone who has facial droop, uh, you can audibly, it's not audibly, you can visibly notice that one side of their face has suddenly gotten slack. There's no muscle definition, no muscle tone there. Uh, someone who can't raise both arms equally effectively or at all. Someone who can't smile equally effectively or at all. Uh, someone who has slurred, stuttering speech, inappropriate word usage for situation or context. Someone who complains of general body weakness, weakness on one side, and has the inability to stand unaided. Please immediately place that person in a position of comfort and dial 911. Something so simple can save a life.